This is Russia, majestic, full of culture, and huge. Russia is the largest country in the world. It spans not one, but two continents, Europe and Asia. And so you have seven continents uh, in the world. You have North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. And so Russia actually is between both Asia and Europe. It's that big, it's huge. More than 143 million people live in Russia. Huge mountains run through the country and Russia's Mount Elbrus is the highest point in Europe. Much of Russia is covered by flat grasslands called steppes. There are huge areas of forest in Russia, and in fact, the country has more forests than any other country in the world. If you have an opportunity and you have the chance to hike through a forest, that is such a great way not to only reconnect with nature, but to clear your mind and it's good for your body and your soul. I think I would love to visit Russia and hike through their forests. Russia has many different climates. In some areas, such as Siberia, it's very cold and the temperature can drop to an icy negative 89.8 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 67.6 .6 degrees Celsius. So let me put that, let's put that in perspective. Water freezes at 32 degrees. So 32 degrees plus an almost 90 more degrees. You're, you're, you're talking about 122 degrees below freezing. That is super, 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 super cold. Why do you think that Russia has so many different climates? So uh, one part of Russia could be very, very cold like Siberia, or um, another uh, part could be relatively temperate or, or more warm, of course. Well, let's think back about our, our picture. And so let's go back to this picture of Russia. So look at how far north Russia reaches, almost to the northern ice caps. And so the further north you go, the colder it's going to be. And so the reason why Russia has so many different types of climates is because when the land reaches so far, you have a wider variety of, of temperatures. Down here is close to the Mediterranean. It's gonna be a little bit more temperate or moderate. Mississippi is right, is right here. And so Mississippi is gonna be a little bit warmer because it's closer to the equator um, but the further you get away from that equator, that center line of the, uh, of the world, it's going to get colder the further you move away, or it's gonna get warmer the closer you move to the middle. In other parts of the country, it's warm enough to swim. And so here's a picture of the Black Sea. Sochi is a Russian city on the coast of the Black Sea. Sochi was actually a, um, a place where the uh, Winter Olympics were hosted. And the Black Sea, as we pointed out before, is close to the Medi is part of the Mediterranean. Russia has a long history. For hundreds of years, mighty czars ruled. Catherine the Great is an example of a Russian czar. And they helped to make Russia, very powerful. Uh, Russian czars are basically like leaders, um, uh, kind of like monarchs or kings and queens. 
Russian czars lived in a huge building called the Winter Palace, and today it is now a museum. And you'll notice that there are many, um, many uh, royal palaces and places that uh, belong to the monarchs of before have been converted in many places in Europe for sure uh, into museums that you can visit today, like Versailles in France. In 1917, the Russian people got rid of the czars and, the Ru and Russia became the center of a new country called the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was also called the USSR and it was made up of 15 states, including Russia. So listen to that history. Russia, you know, was at one point ruled by czars, these king and queen like um, rulers. And then Russia actually joined this union and it talks about 15 different states, including Russia. So this is kind of similar to the concept of our United States. You know, each state in the United States is very different, has its own culture. And that's what the USSR was sort of like. In 1991, the Soviet Union broke apart and Russia became its own country again. And Boris Yeltsin was Russia's first president. Now, when you have a situation of countries coming together and breaking apart, there's usually a lot of strife, struggle, unrest. Uh, I actually remember when I was in elementary school, I had a pen pal from Yugoslavia and uh, they were, you know, had just uh, disassembled the Soviet Union and so there was a lot of change that was happening in the lives of the people there, especially the children and I just, I remember that. And how, how true is that for current times? We are encountering a lot of changes with our current state of affairs. Moscow is the capital of Russia. It also is Russia's largest city, and more than 12 million people live there. St. Petersburg is Russia's second largest city. Now, when you look at pictures of Russia and all of these ornate and ordained uh, buildings, they really, really um, are something almost out of a fairy fairy tale book. They're they're quite beautiful, and so the architecture in Russia is 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 uh, some of the most renowned or well known in the world. Most people in Russian speak Rus Russia speak Russian, and Russian uses different letters than the English language. This is how you say hi in Russian. And notice that the way it is spelled is completely different than what would be recognizable to us. And so it would be a completely new way to learn a language. Privet. Russians use Cyrillic alphabet. So the alphabet is known as a Cyrillic alphabet. And that word for hi is Privet. Did you know that the first person into space was Russian? His name was Yuri Gargarin. Yuri Gargarin went to space in 1961. 1961. So we're in 2020. That's about 2040. 20 plus 40 is 60, 59 years ago. It really doesn't seem that far ago that, that the first person that went to space um, was just that long ago. It, it's really a relatively new thing. Um, however, Laika, a Russian dog, got sent to space four years before Yuri. Wow, did you know that? Russia put the first satellite into space too, and it was called Sputnik 1. And during this time, if you look at American history, there was sort of a race 
to space. And so the Russians and the Americans were really competing. And so the uh, Russians, you know, put the first man in space, but the Americans had the first man on the moon. And so there was that competition. Russians love music and dance, and Moscow's Bolshoi Ballet is one of the most famous in the world. Dancers leap to songs written by famous Russian composers or people who, uh, who write music. Folk dancing is also popular in Russia. Russians are also big fans of ice hockey, and some children grow up playing on frozen ponds. So it gets so cold that the ponds actually freeze over and people are able to ice skate on them. Whack! The puck flies through the air. What are other sports do Russians enjoy? Well, soccer, basketball, and chess. Do you remember what country chess was invented? India. Yeah, chess comes from India and India is not too far away from Russia. There are many delicious Russian foods. People enjoy different kinds of pancakes. Russians also like salty fish eggs called caviar. Soup made from beets and cabbage is eaten on cold nights. Caviar, if you didn't know, uh, yes, is, is called fish eggs and it's actually considered to be one of the most, um, one of the delicacies of the world. And so, uh, you know, when you go to a very, very fancy, fancy restaurant, they may put a little dollop of caviar on the dish. Um, and so it's a very, it's a very uh, expensive type of uh, food. What else is special about Russia? The country is home to Lake Baikal. It's the largest and deepest lake in the world. More than 28 million people visit Russia each year, and it really does look beautiful. Here are our fast facts. The capital city of Russia is Moscow. The population of Russia is more than 143 million. The main language is Russian. The money is called the ruble. The major religion is Russian Orthodox, which is a type of Christianity. The neighboring countries include Kazakhstan, China, Ukraine, Belarus, Finland, Latvia, Poland, and Mongolia. Here's a fun fact. Russia's most famous animal is the Siberian tiger, and it's the largest cat in the world. Let's take a look at some of our vocabulary. So a capital is a city where a country's government is based, in this case, Moscow. In Mississippi, it's Jackson, and in the United States is Washington, DC. Climates are the typical weather patterns in a particular area. Composers are people who write music. Continents are the world's seven large land masses. And remember, that uh, Russia covers what two continents? Asia and Europe. A satellite is a spacecraft that circles Earth and czars are the kings or queens that ruled Russia. So let's talk about a few different activities that we can put together that will uh, honor and celebrate Russian culture. Have you ever heard of Russian Fabergé eggs? These eggs are um, really ornate and decorated, often made of like uh, precious metals and gems. You could take some of maybe perhaps your old Easter eggs, find some buttons, some gems, and some things that you can glue onto them and create your very own Fabergé egg. Have you ever heard of Russian nesting dolls? 
You can do this same concept with some cups that you have at home. Take four cups uh, that are smaller than one cup and you can cut out, design, and color uh, your very own Russian nesting dolls. Remember that Russian architecture is known worldwide. Let's look at how we can create our very own Russian architectural buildings. So here's where we begin. You're gonna to wanna to start with the pinnacle of the building. And so you're gonna to wanna to draw a point and then you're gonna to want to uh, draw sort of uh, the uh, center part of the structure. And it kind of looks to me a little bit like a pencil. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at drawing the other two uh, smaller towers or medium-sized towers. And this is where you can kind of get creative with uh, the lines. Notice that um, once you go about partway down, we start to experiment with curved lines and different types of designs will be something that we really make our buildings look interesting with later. And finally, you're gonna wanna take and draw your most smallest tower right there in front. Once your towers have been designed, you can then start to decorate them and make them look ornate. Remember, Russian architecture looks a little bit like it's out of a fairy tale or perhaps like a really high-end designer cake. And so you're gonna wanna experiment with different lines and textures on your paper. This is where the sky is the limit and however you want to design your buildings is going to be perfectly okay. It's just a way for us to honor a different culture.